is up, everyone? Welcome to Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My <laughs> name is John Polnick. I got a lower third right there that proves it. Uh, we are recording this show from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, who is in his brand new fancy studio. Check yep. that out, everyone. What do you think of that? You're no, you're no longer mm. on your uh, grandmother's like yeah. uh, living room or something. <laughs> yeah. What the uh, hell was that? Right, right. I'm no, I'm no longer recording the studio on furniture that came over on the Mayflower. Uh, yeah, you know, whatever. It's not the bat cave. Maybe we'll call it the nerd cave. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Of interesting note, John Alcantara will like that. He'll recognize Nikki Hayden's motorcycle helmet there. And uh, I don't know. We'll go over the stuff as uh, as we as we go. But yeah, it's good. Uh, John, I am disappointed to report. Uh, it does get cold down here. I'm fucking freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cold? <laughs> well, let's hard. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm it's, freezing. Let's hurry up and get this. <laughs> well, thanks for dropping yeah. an F-bomb in the first three minutes of the show. Yeah. Uh, good there thing we go. don't make any money off of this thing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we'd be deranked. Um, yeah. It's funny. Yeah, it's not cold at all here in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, in fact, I had to remount my camera on a separate uh, separate device because in our studio, when the AC is going, the arm the arms that hold the camera shake and you get this wobble. Uh, <laughs> so I have to figure the, something else the AC. out. Yeah. yeah so uh, we, all right, we, we couldn't be more polar opposites uh, when it comes Two to producing the show. Different yeah. worlds today. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, you couple. guys, uh, you guys did not. <laughs> <laughs> tune in to talk about the weather i know uh so uh you're here for the cars what do we do on this show uh this show is about the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites including uh bring a trailer p car market marked cars and bids uh shift gate and whoever else happens to join the game um my partner, Michael Deeb, and I, we dig through all these cars that are listed. We come up with the most interesting one. We decide on what the most interesting car of the day is. We have a conversation about it. Uh, we make a prediction as to what we think it'll sell for. Michael Deeb breathes and smacks a bunch in the microphone. And then uh, we uh, we reconcile that at the end of the show. So stick around to the end, and we will tell you what the most interesting car of the day winds up actually selling for. Uh, we travel into the future, so you don't have to. Today, car pretty darn interesting and i know why michael d my partner picked it um, oh, because man. uh he Baby. may have a bit of a connection to one of these look at Ooh, that thing Woo! look at that man that is hot okay jp on bring a trailer uh several days from now closing is this 1993 porsche 911 rs america and here's the kicker, JP. This car only has 10,000 original miles. Offered out of Beverly Hills, California from a private seller is this spectacular. And I, John, I will go so far as to say perfectly equipped. Um, as you may remember, if you're a big Porsche nerd like John and I are, uh, you may know that the RSA essentially only came with four options. They were a sunroof, a stereo, uh air conditioning and a limited slip differential this car has a limited slip and a radio with no sunroof and no ac i would say this is like the most perfectly equipped grand prix white rs america ever made like it's it's just the one i would want jp look at that thing and um it looks like they lowered it a little bit too um i don't remember reading anything that says that the car uh had aftermarket suspension but that car is certainly sitting uh, the stance is is just right. Uh, spectacular car. I, not a lot to say. It, it's in Southern California. It's got all the right things. I love it. You might remember I had one for about a year. Uh, I let a friend of mine drive it, and he had an unfortunate accident in which he survived unscathed, essentially, uh, but the car was totaled. So, uh, Andras, happy birthday. Shout out to Andras. Um, if you wanted to uh, replace the car, uh, here it is. You can buy me this one, baby, and we're all good, okay? So, uh, JP, I think this car is going to break the bank. Since my car um, left the road in uh, 2019, I think it was, um, these cars have gone crazy in the secondary market, and they bring big money. Um, I'll let you talk about the car, and then I'll get into the money, but I think you're going to be stunned when you hear how high my bid is on this one. 
Uh, well, I, you know, yeah, I think uh, this is definitely the type of car that I would think uh, would bring big money. Did you look at this? Is there any evidence of repaint? Uh, did they, is there any mention of this? What is going on up in this corner uh, yeah. right here by the... Is that overspray that we're looking Not at? That I'm, what is know. this in the corner? Sure Do you guys see that? What is this? Can yeah, you guys sure see the corner? Is that some kind of just flaking? Is this, huh, boy. And there's no mention of respray in the ad? No. In fact, uh, I think they paint me to the car. Wow, mm. that's interesting. Uh, I wonder what that means. Okay, well, anyways, I was just noticing that while we were going uh, through the photos uh, or while you were talking about the car. Look, an RSA uh, is... A 964 no in this configuration is one of the greatest cars of all time. I absolutely agree with you that uh, this is probably the best uh, configured car. Although, being a Las Vegas person, yeah, I would actually want the air conditioning. Uh, so, if you're in Phoenix or here uh, or someplace like Texas or whatever, you'd probably. Even, even Southern California. I mean, yeah. unless you lived out in Santa Monica, like, you know, if Ben had this car, he'd probably want the AC. He'd use it all the time, you know? Yeah. Well, goes, and, yeah. you know, is this a car? I mean, it, look, these cars were built so that they could race them. Um, so I don't know right. why any of them really came with sunroofs and air conditioning. Uh, and it's cool that this one, you know, is set up the right way. But I think if you're going to drive it on the road, AC is pretty darn nice. I would definitely do without the sunroof. Um, okay, so this car, white on black with that with those great seats. Uh, yeah, th th if, you've, uh, if you've ever driven one of these things, Oh my gosh, they really are as great as everyone says they are. It's there. I mean, are they as good as the uh, European RS? No, they don't have the like the lightened glass and stuff. But um, <laughs> you know, it's just there's just something about the different st th that steering rack not having the power like the other ones. Oh. It's yeah, just it's so awesome. good, man. I uh, I tell I've told a story before. Uh, I don't know if it's been a while since I've told it. When I bought my 993 cab, uh, like what 12 years ago now, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, at yeah. the time when when 911s air cooled cars weren't really worth a whole lot, um, I discovered one of these at a dealership. Uh, and it was crazy because the dealership listed the cars. One of those things, you know how dealerships online, yeah. when a car comes in in inventory, before they get pictures, it goes up. You know, this one just said 94 911. Um, and, and I was reading the description. It said whale tail. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. No, nine, 94s didn't come with a whale tail. Right. So I called the dealership and I was like, hey, does it say RS on it somewhere? And the guy's like, yeah. no. I'm like, Really? Like, well, are the seats cloth? He's like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> really? Uh, so I went down there during a snowstorm to a BMW dealership. <laughs> and sure enough, it, you know, now when I walked up to it, it didn't have the RS badges on it. Because apparently right. when, you, when you got these cars, the RS badges, you could choose to have the RS badges put on or mm -hmm. not. Or at least the stickers. Um, yeah. And I walked up it, and sure enough, it was an RSA. I was like, oh my gosh. The crazy thing at the time, they wanted like... Thirty-five thousand dollars for that. I car. can't believe you didn't buy that car. I, not, why, I tell me again why you didn't buy that car. Did you slip on the ice right in front of the front door and hit your head on the glass, or what happened? Like, I was just like, well, honestly, I had asked around, you know, a couple of buddies. I was like, dude, I found an RSA, and a couple of them didn't even know what RSAs were. I'm like, really? Okay, oh so I should have disowned them as friends at the time. <laughs> um, you know, and my wife, to her credit, she's like, well. You know, you, you've you had four coupes as your last four cars, and each time I sold them um, You're like, because I wanted to get a convertible <laughs> 993. And she's yeah. like, well, is this a convertible 993? I'm like, no. She's like, well, are you going to be unhappy with it then? I'm like, I don't know. It's an RSA, though. She didn't. Of course, she doesn't know what an RSA was. Uh, <laughs> and then so I hemmed and hauled about it. And get this, like a week yeah. later, the dealership calls me up and says, we'll sell it to you for for thirty thousand dollars. No way. <laughs> it and had some miles on it, right? Was it black yeah, and had I mean, like it had, ninety thousand miles on it? No, or not even. It was a. It was black on black with uh, with the uh, what do you call it? Two two option two two zero. So it had the limited slip. So it was the one you want. Yep. Um, yep. 
you know, and it had like 50 something thousand miles. on Oh it. my and, God. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. So I went over and I'm like looking at it. Uh, but think about this. My, another friend of mine, he just yeah. bought a nine, six, four, like maybe two or three months ago before this. And he bought like the nicest nine, six, four. It was a 93 red on yeah. black. It was probably the nicest one I had seen at the time, because remember back then they were all roached out. It was the yep. nicest one there was. And he paid $17,000 for it. So here's this car. It's <laughs> almost twice as much as any yeah. other 964 on the market. And I'm going, I, uh, and I'm him and hauling it at the, de- at the dealership, looking at it with the sales puke. Uh, and then I got a phone call from the mechanic where the convertible one that I had found, the 993 cab, yeah. was going through a PPI. And oh, they're like, my oh, God, this car is so perfect. Funny. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm getting the other one. And I walked away. Like an yeah. idiot. Biggest fish that got away story that I have. Uh, in the Porsche world. But anyways, that's not this car. Uh, these 2020 cars hindsight. Definitely worth a heck yeah. of a lot more. Yeah. Oh, um, J- JP, than, I just uh, want to $30,000. I just want to affirm something for you. So in the comments on Bring a Trailer, some of the commenters have mentioned that they can see the overspray and they ask the consigner what's going on. Mm. Later, the consigner um says that uh, he, he greets everybody, but he doesn't address that specific question, which I think is mm. fishy. The other thing that's fishy is they do mention that they have the RS decals and that they will put them on. But again, why aren't they on the car? And they go on the door and it's above the door where the overspray is. So there might yet still be something fishy about this. This car has a few days uh, before closing as we're recording this early in the week. So we may see that they address that at some point. If they do and there is some paint or some fishy history on that, that will negatively affect the value of the car. Um, But otherwise, this car should be poised to make a big splash. If those badges are the original badges, um, like I said, they didn't always get put on the car and they go on that rear right. quarter panel where the shark fin would usually go. So it's right. not really on the door, but I think that's kind of what you meant. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know that whole, that whole thing is a little weird, right? Yeah, it is. It is. And it's hard to, it's hard to understand because we don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, it's two decals that go in the door and then there's a badge that would stick to the rear deck lid and none of those things are on the car. Mm-hmm. Um, so the cars come with those unless you ask them to omit them. Yeah. All right. So what do you think this car is going to go for? All right. So on the presumption that this car will check out and everything's fine and there's a logical explanation for why that door is weird. Um, JP, I'm going to give you a. Oh, did we lose Michael Deep for a second there or did we lose everyone? Looks like we lost everyone. Uh, there oh, we go. OK, hey, we, uh, hey. we lost you guys there for yeah. just a moment there. Sorry about that. All right. So um, a couple of months ago, a 1993 rs america on bring a trailer in on bring a trailer painted in like speed yellow or ferrari yellow or something like that with nineteen thousand miles sold for two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that's the highest price uh publicly paid for an rs america that we know of i think this car is poised to become the second biggest one and i'm going to say that this car is going to command $250,000 $250,000 when it closes at auction. It's at $175,000 on seven bids right now. And it technically has a handful of days to go to close. So it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's staring a record number right in the face. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, with five days to go, it's, there's a lot to be said. Like you said, uh, if it's, if it's proven that the car is original paint and everything's good, uh, and it's not fishy, then yeah. uh then yeah i'm with you but there are you know there are qu- we have questions uh and i just want to i want to clarify something here the rs badges where do they go on these they do not go on the door oh they, they go don't. they go on the uh they go on the quarter panel like where the shark fin would go on a let's see here here's one uh if you go see where the quarter panel yeah, there is, it is down there it goes in the yeah. back did yours have Perfect. them or were you, were yours not on it mine mine were on there i just didn't spend a lot of time looking at them he's like i spent more time behind the wheel rather than looking at stickers I did. yeah you, no, you I know what it. i did do you know what i did do because i'm a pretentious piece mm-hmm. um i took the um the, the caps the caps that go on the cup wheels had um silver and black porsche crest mm. and i replaced those with rs caps and i put them on there 
thought that oh, was cool. Oh, that's very fancy, yeah. BFD. Um, all right. So, yeah, and then, you know, the suspension is absolutely looking good on this car. But, yeah. Uh, okay, so did you say you gave a bid? Did you go ahead and go to Yeah, 25? I think yeah. if they – yep, I'm going to go – no, I'm going to go 250. I don't think it's going to bring the 275 because it's not an unusual color. But yeah. I think the miles and the options and the fact that it's in California, I'm going to go 250 grand. Is this a dealer or is this a private no. seller? It's not. But the consigner bought it from Porsche of South Bay, and he name drops all the people in their classic department. Do you remember uh, hearing about a guy named Toffelmeyer? You've heard that name before? I don't. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It rings a bell with me. Um, he is widely regarded as one of the best Porsche retail assistants in the country, and he works now. He heads up the classic department at Porsche South Bay. He mm. assisted the consigner in acquiring the car however many years ago and now the the consigner has decided to part with it uh, well, hold on a second. In, can I you presume. can you help explain that to me what do you so it's not a dealer this is being sold by someone's a representing private a private individual is representing this car so a consigner um so if you i thought and help me out deep you have more experience in the dealership world than i do uh yeah. if someone's a consigner don't they have to be a dealer to consign something uh, and I, I, ergo, I just, you would have to have uh, you have to have to pay taxes I was, and stuff. I was only trying to drop sophisticated lingo for the sake of the show. I just met mm -hmm. the guy who's listing the car. The owner of the car is listing it himself. There is no middleman in this transaction. Okay. So the guy who is the seller, not consigner, seller, mm -hmm. um, bought the car from Porsche South Bay and name dropped oh, all okay. the people that helped him there. That's okay. All. Okay. I, yeah, I, I just, you know, because I mean, that's important, right? Because if you were buying this yeah. from a, a dealer or a consigner, then the there would be an obligation for taxes, and um, especially in right. California. Of course, now, if this car stays in California, you're going to have to pay sales tax anyway, whether it's private or not. Uh, but a that's lot right. of states, that is a big distinction. And on a $200,000 plus car, another, Oof. you know, 7 to... 10% is a real dollar amount to factor into how much you're actually going to pay for a car like this. Now, a car like this, I don't know if somebody cares about that extra 20 grand. Do they? I don't know. It, in California, 11% for tax and tags, that's a big number. That could be 25, yeah. 26,000 bucks here, you know? Yeah, so if somebody's paying 250, they're right there at that 275 in the door uh, or yeah. out the door. But um, yeah, will this car make 250? I'm going to bet that it does not. Um, I yep. am going to go under, not because I dislike the car or anything, but I am one that that little bit of overspray is a problem. Yep. It it isn't a problem if it's if it's noted and acknowledged, and uh, I know how the bring a trailer community can be. Uh, oh, yeah, they're a, on it already. Yeah, if people are talking about it, uh, the seller has responded to something, but not that. Uh, that is a huge red flag um, in the sense that not necessarily that the car is actually fishy, but it's a red flag as to how the community will respond to it. I suspect, um, boy, that could be cancer for this ad. Uh, people <laughs> get so nitpicky about little junk like that, um, and that can spiral out of control and create a wildfire that could really stymie this car. Is, uh, this, is a, this is a It doesn't say this is a no reserve, does it? Uh, no, definitely not. Okay, so I mean, there you go. I, I, am scared for the seller of this car that it may not sell because of that. Um, it might just completely stop uh, buyers. So it I'm might. gonna. Um, yeah. Now I'm not necessarily predicting that, but uh, but for the f sake of the show, I'm gonna put that out there, and so I'm gonna predict 199 in its uh, FTS because Ooh. of all this stuff. Uh, but I'm with you. I, I believe that the car is certainly worth 250, uh, especially in today's market. I mean, this is yeah. one of the best Porsches of all time. So uh, even with, hell, I wouldn't care if it was resprayed in 10 different colors to drive the hell out of this thing because who cares what it looks like. The other thing that gets really weird, JP, last take, is mm -hmm. that once you get up into that 250, 275 range, you can go find a, re a real 964 RS in Europe and bring it over yourself for That's similar a money. Good point. Um, you know what I mean? Like yeah. those cars in Europe don't bring 400 grand like they do here. They bring mm -hmm. 260. So if you can go find one for 260 and spend 15,000 to bring it into the States, uh, you're way ahead. And that's a superior car with the seam welded chassis and all the rs bits that are on that car that make it you know a better an even better driver than these uh yeah. you know you don't get the wing but you get everything else so there you go yep all right guys what do you think tell us in the comments below right after you hit the subscribe like or notification button uh you guys gotta help us uh spread the word man 
Spread the word. Yeah. Share a nerd. Subscribe, grow the herd. All that kind subscribe. of stuff. Michael Deeb, you know, he spent all that time, effort, and money on building a studio in his yeah, basement. Five minutes. And what are you doing? All you got to do is hit subscribe. All you got to mm-hmm. do is share this video. You don't got to do nothing. You don't got to lift anything heavy. We know you guys are watching the show but not subscribing. Come on, guys. You nerd. Join us. Go ahead and subscribe. Let us help us grow this channel. Let's make it happen. Uh, and let's find out how much this particular car sells for right after this. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Vegas Auto Fest. The drivers are coming. This is one of our big sponsors. It's the biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere. If you haven't made plans to be part of Vegas Auto Fest on September 17th, then do it now. Go to VegasAutoFest.com and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live. Plan a trip to Vegas on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. Welcome back, everyone. You are watching Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Look who's in studio at the Container Park with me, Michael Deep. Welcome to Las Vegas. Uh, while you guys were watching that 60-second commercial, Michael Deep got on Flute. a flying... Um, Cayenne. Flying Cayenne. A, 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 uh, yeah, it's like a time-traveling Cayenne. And uh, he went to the future, came to the future, rather, because that's where we are now. And uh, here we are at the end of this 964 auction. Uh, we're ready to tell you what happened with the auction. Michael Deeb, what are the results of Ooh. this beautiful car? John, this one comes with a ton of disclaimers. You know, uh, it's hard to explain. You noticed right away while we were reviewing it that there were some overspray parts like around the door frame and stuff, and you questioned that. What's interesting is I had missed that, honestly. And then while you were talking and we were reviewing, I saw that some people had commented. They even said in the comments, they gave the photo number, which is the exact photo you uh, talked about. And um, I don't know that the seller ever addressed that. And as such, I'm bidding on the potential of the car with no stories. So I went 250,000 thinking that's the retail mark for a perfect example like this one. Uh, but you said 199 and failed to sell. And JP, even though you didn't get a Yahtzee, you deserve a Yahtzee. Our car was at 175 grand when we looked at it. It made it up to $191,000 where it failed to sell. And it's interesting because again, I don't know that the seller ever addressed those images. And then somebody else came out to defend the seller, like the guy's friend, and said, oh, well, you know how it goes. It's a holiday weekend. But JP, it failed to sell on uh, eight bids. It was at 175 on seven bids. So it only got one more bid, and then that was it. Uh, So this car got no action. And I think it's because they never truly addressed what was going on with the paint. If this car is so perfect, we know that an overspray like that would never have come from the factory. So if you don't have a good explanation and if you don't address it, if there's not full disclosure, then you're never going to find out the real value of your car. So is this car, even with the overspray, worth over $191,000? That question remains unanswered. If it were perfect, I think my number would have been in the neighborhood of what this car could bring even today. Uh, But this one one just sort of fizzled out and and we we were kind of left you know, sort of wanting for more information and see what happens. I, I hope we notice when this car comes back into the marketplace, what they're asking for it and how they're going to discuss it. If you could get the seller and have a direct conversation with them, which you would be able to do if it winds up in the classifieds. But anyway, um, left wanting, kind of bummed out. Uh, really love the car. Uh, at 191, I'd buy it for that and fix the overspray and the hell with it. Move on. It's a, it's a perfect example. But I'd rather have one with a few miles on it and just go out and drive it because these cars truly are meant to drive um they're one of the better driving air-cooled cars that 
that Porsche ever brought to our shores that anybody could afford. Um, I certainly miss my car, and this one reminds me so much of it being the same color. So, JP, I'm sure you're not surprised by that result. You uh, you really did. I, I commend you. You really called this one. Well, thanks. It, it's crazy to think that 191 is a number that failed to sell when pr less than a year ago that would would have been crazy two years ago um these were still not even breaking a hundred um so for this thing to uh, to be kind of have a wishy-washy history and still get bid up to 191 with hardly any bids like you mentioned it, it still bodes well for the mark and for the specific uh, for this specific, you know, the RS nine six four car, the nine six fours are the hottest thing in Porsche uh, over and over again. We talk about that, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it just goes to show you, and and I think this is why a lot of people choose not to sell their cars on an auction site because if you're not willing to have the conversation with the community um, uh, to overcome objections to talk about. Uh, issues with the car. I don't think that overspray issue is that big a deal. No. I don't think that those things were the type of things that would have kept this car from selling if they were addressed in earnest and in good faith. If you come on and say, hey, yeah, this is my car, and I don't know, yeah, we redid the, the, the roof because... I don't know, my whatever. kid scratched the roof sure. with a bicycle or something like that. Whatever. Okay, people are like, okay, fine, whatever, moving on. Moving but on. when it's just nebulous out there, it makes you think that, all right, what else aren't we being told? Right. Um, this, it, it becomes that kind of like, mm, I'm just not going to take the risk on a car that I can't look at. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, because that's the other thing with buying a car on an auction site is that you're going to spend $200,000 on a car that you've never seen before. Oh, that's crazy. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, I... Yeah, I mean, if I'm spending two hundred thousand dollars on the thing, I'm driving it, I'm inspecting it, I'm yeah. getting into everything. You're so flying out to see it. Yeah, for sure. you yeah. really are leaning on the credibility of uh, not just the seller but the platform and everything like that. And I think that's why a lot of times we see cars, if they're not exactly perfect on something like Picard, nobody's going to touch it because we know I, I've seen. At, I've seen Picar lie in the ads. I've just straight up seen it happen, right? It's like, mm, they this is some used car description type stuff. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, there it is, guys. If you're going to sell your car on one of these auction sites, be available to answer questions. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, when you put your car in a Concours, uh, when the judge walks up to your car, you're at 100 points, and then everything he sees wrong, he deducts a point. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. You, when you see a really sort of sexy thumbnail photo as your hero shot, and then you read the description, and then you look at the photos, and then you blow them up, and, you, and then you ask questions, you're deducting for all the things that you can find fault, and then decide if the value still remains. But when something is there, and you don't know what else, because the seller has sort of lost credibility by not addressing it, then you're in trouble. And so that, I think, is the, the, the main culprit here and why this really nice car failed to sell. So anyways, super bummer. Uh, love the love the model and love that car. I, the paint what, wouldn't what have bothered me. In your, what, what happens with this car now? I think it winds up, um, you know, not, I don't want to say auto trader, but it's going to wind up on somebody's website or, or some classified somewhere, maybe in DuPont registry or something like that. But eventually somebody has to address that thing. Uh, I wonder though, anyway, I, it's just a whole other thing, but like, do you make the thing go away and then put it up for sale? You know, like realizing you can't pull it over, you know, the public's eyes. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's burnt for BAT. It's not coming back to BAT. No. And to take this over to PCAR market would be silly because BAT is top. So PCAR market would absolutely try. Absolutely, they'll um, try. And maybe it winds up there. We, we'll, we'll know if it does. If we won't miss it. If it those problems and brings it over to another, that's the thing is that the community will know. They look at both platforms. So if somebody like brings the car over, they're going to say, well, what happened over here? Yeah. And now I, I feel like it's almost even worse. I think the only way at this point for this car, for this seller to sell this car is to consign it with a broker. Um, address a few of the deal, the issues, and just let someone, like you said, you know, 
put it yeah. up. Uh, you know, this 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 seems like the kind of car that would be. This seems like the level of car that would be at uh, was it Beverly Hills? Yes, uh, <laughs> not Porsche, but Beverly Hills Motor Co- Motor Co or whatever. Club. Yeah, they Motoring have some Club or something, weird yeah. stuff in all, there. Every one of their cars has yeah, a story. Always every sketch. One of them. Always yeah. sketch. So, all right, guys, what do you think of the results of this? Was that uh, should the seller have taken that money? Should this? Do you think the seller would have gotten more if they were around to answer questions, or do you think it was better left unsaid? Um, tell us in the comments below. Let us know about a car that you want us to review in the future what do you think is the most interesting car of the day on a future auction that's coming up soon um we want to hear from you also share some of this stuff spread the word share a nerd grow the herd subscribe right subscribe. now subscribe subscribe make it happen thanks for hanging out guys we'll see you tomorrow